hello friends in this part of the program we will focus on some of the participatory rural appraisal exercises first on this exercise is repo building repo building is a prerequisite for conducting participatory rural appraisal exercises in the villages we develop a cordial relations with the villagers with the different sections of the people and accordingly we use uh, the people's skills and people's wisdom for conducting different exercises next we come to the timeline or historical events recording this is an important uh, exercise in which we try to record different events related to the village or village life so we can have some of the important events here we find the communication system was started in 1940 so it gives us ideas that how the people get benefited with with railway line construction in 1952 the first middle school started in 1952 so it indicates about the educational system in the village similarly other infrastructure facilities were developed in 1954 like canal irrigation system so we can just the development uh, process and the different level of development at different stages N like in 1965 the people got the tube wells for the drinking water purposes so this is one important event for the villagers like uh, like on some negative events can also be recorded for example drought might have occurred in the village or some uh, flood might have occurred in the village so which has a direct or indirect impact on the whole village life system so we try to record some important events in this timeline exercises there is an event like the tiger killed two persons in the village it indicates that nearby in the forest the forest may be dense and the wild animals were available so it is an indicator that the wild animals were available in the forest area nearby forest area so it is an indicator of ecological aspect also so in this way socio economic and ecological aspects and major events are recorded by conducting this exercise with a group of villagers now we come to the next the next exercise is social mapping in social mapping we try to map the different communities who who are resided in the different parts of the who are residing in different parts of the village if you take an an example of punjab village there may be a communities known as scs in a particular part of the village then we may have the jat population in some part of the village in the central part we may have the population of gujar community similarly we may have some artisan communities here and likewise some other communities may be here so in under these exercises we do all these exercises in the local languages and we try to find out that which communities are living in the villages and approximately how many households or the number of households we also try to record suppose there are the 10 households of sc communities five households of artisans communities then there may be 50 households for jat community likewise the gujars may be the 20 households so in this way we try to find out the different communities this indicates us the major socio cultural features of the people it helps us try to draw out different project plans for the different communities generally most of the development programs are focused to the poorer sections of the society they may be the landless people like scs and it may be the artisans so some development programs we can initiate for these sections of the people if we want to develop some programs or projects for the 
farming communities, then the farming communities are those who do the farming and even the dairy and other kind of projects we can undertake for the farming communities. So this is the social mapping. We try to map the community and approximately number of houses of the different communities. Now we come to the next. Next is resource mapping. Under resource mapping, we once again involve a group of people. They may be educated. They draw a map of their village with all the boundaries, etc. Then they try to map out major resources of their village. Like it may be the forest in one part of the village. These are the indicators of the forest. Suppose these are the forest land. There may be some part of the cultivable land or fields. Then we may have uh, water bodies coming through the northern part of the village and cutting towards the western part. So this is the water resource or a small rivulet which is passing through the village and we can have the water bodies. So this is a water resource system. Similarly, the other resources can also be mapped. It may be some forestry activities, it may be the social forestry here. Then we may have some horticulture horticulture plots. Here may, we may have some part of pasture. So likewise, we try to map out the different resources of the villages, even the tube wells can also be mapped. Suppose these are the tube wells which, which, which are constructed in the different part. So with a different viewpoint, we try to map out the different resources of the village. Later on, we can utilize this resource map for reference for the formulation of different projects. So this is resource mapping. We try to map out all the resources of a particular village. Now we come to the next. Next exercise is known as transect walk or survey. During repo building exercises, we try to find out some of the key persons of the villages who have better knowledge about the village of different systems, different resources. So they can be helpful to us for uh, explaining some of the major important issues. For example, we want to do a transect walk to map the water resource bodies of a particular village, how the water bodies, water resources are available in the village. For this purpose, we can have a walk towards this nala or rivulet. This may be known as nala transect. A walk with a group of the villagers and outsiders, it may be some hydrologists or civil engineers who want to construct some check dams at some places or they want to construct some irrigation dams, etc. So a group of scientists with a group of the people, they try to visit or they try to find out the flow of the resource that how and how much water is flowing through this river, what are the places which are adjoining to the this river. It may be the fields where we want to construct a dam and further we can provide the irrigational benefits to the land which is adjoining to this Nala. So this is a transect walk. We try to find out one particular subject. Similarly, this transect walk can also be done to know about 
the different vegetations. Suppose this is a forest area. So one transect walk can also be done with a group of villagers inside the forest regions. Suppose we start from here, a group of five to six persons, two, three outsiders, maybe the forest officials and two, three villagers who are the key informers, they can come together and I have a walk through, through the forest area and they can map out the vegetation system. Means what type of vegetation is there? what type of species of uh, trees are there. So, e it all be recorded with the help of these villagers and the outsiders can also contribute their experiences about the vegetation. Similarly, so different groups of the people can do these exercises and there are uh, operation known as the coming operation just like in army. We can have a total picture of the villages by doing a coming operation with a different issues. Suppose a group of people is going from going walking with the purpose to know about the sanitation and environmental condition in the village. Similarly, another group of the people can go and find out the housing pattern in the villages and when another group of the people can find out the type of crops which are available in the village. So from the different regions, we try to have a walk across the village to find out the different informations related to different issues. So the different groups of the scientists can work together and develop an integrated information uh, bank for on the different issues. So this is a very, very important task which can be conducted through this transject walk. Now we come to the next point. This is the land use pattern. This is very important to know about the what type of land use pattern is there. Suppose this is a village. With the help of villagers, we try to map out the land use pattern. Suppose how much part of the village land is utilized for agriculture. This part may be for the residential purposes. There may be a pond here. This part may be a pasture land and upper part may be a forest land. So this maps are prepared by the villagers itself and they try to locate the different land use pattern in that particular village. Means we try to find out the where the different activities are taking place because the land is the land is a basic resource and how the people are, livelihood of the people is dependent on the lands, how much people have the land, how much are the, how many uh, of them are landless. So in this way, we try to find out the, all the land use pattern in a particular village. This may change with the time and we can have a land use pattern before, before the initiation of some project and after the, after the finishing of the project, we can have second land use pattern and accordingly, we can compare or monitor that how the development is taking place. So the land use pattern is a very, very important exercise. Now we come to the next exercise that is known as cropping pattern species suitable for the area. Under this, we find out that what is the cropping pattern in a particular village. There are, if there are three agricultural seasons, then what the people are growing for Rabi season and Kharif season generally in India and in Amid that is known as 
jayad or a crop during the summer so what type of the crops they are growing in rabi season it may be the wheat it may be mustard and so on so this is this is the cropping pattern for the rabi season similarly in the kharif season we may have paddy and during this period we may have some vegetables vegetables and some crop so we try to find out the cropping pattern of that particular village so that we can know how the farmers are dependent on the different crops whether they are following the monocropping or they are following the mixed cropping so this is very very important to know about the cropping pattern how the farmers are adopting the different methods of cultivation and different crops they are growing so this is the exercise which is done for the cropping pattern under this cropping pattern also we can have the different species of one particular crop suppose the wheat have three or four species then we can find out the where this number 1 species is suitable where this number 2 species species is su suitable and similarly other species we can check out which type of the soil is required for this what type of inputs are required for this so accordingly we can find out the different varieties or the different species of the crops so that we can judge the suitability of the crops in particular type of the soils now we come to the next type of technologies used by the farmers types of the technologies used by the farmers it may be the agricultural implements like some may have the traditional way of doing things like plow and some rich farmers may have the tractors etc similarly for irrigation purpose some may be dependent on the tube wells some some people may be dependent on the dug well so the different technology or artifacts used by the farmers for the different different purposes we try to note out we try to note down these these different technologies used by the farmers then similarly then energy devices whether they are using the traditional chula or they are using the improved chula or biogas plant for fulfilling their traditional fuel needs so this is important to note down the different technologies used by the farmers for undertaking different activities now we come to the next exercise wealth ranking wealth ranking is very very important because in a traditional village system in in india the people are divided into different sections they may be the rich farmers or money lenders they may be the medium farmers they may be the small or marginal farmers and some of the people may be the landless or the artisans under wealth ranking we try to find out the differentiation of wealth availability to different sections of the society for example land may be the one criteria which divides the people in different sections there may be some landlords or money lenders they may have a the major part of land in a village then may we may have some rich farmers
then below that we may have some medium farmers then we may have a small farmers and then landless agricultural laborer so in traditional indian village society these differences differentiation is very very clear there are some landlords or money lenders who have the major chunk of the land or the land resources available very accessible to them then there we may have some rich farmers below to these landlords then we may have some medium farmers and a small farmers as well as landless agricultural laborers so the land may be the one criteria for the wealth ranking similarly there may be some other indicators also for judging the wealth of the people for example as i told you the land was one parameter then similarly housing pattern can also indicate about the wealth of the person so we can have a, a housing pattern of the different sections of the people then we can also have some indicator that government service so under this exercises with a group of villagers we can map out the these parameters with different sections of the society suppose there are the three sections of the society one may be the rich people one may be the medium people and third may be the poor people or the landless people so obviously this will land size will be higher here and in it will be little lesser in the medium and it the poor people or the landless people they do not ha have any land then housing pattern for the rich people it may be pakka type it may be even for them also it is well furnished but but for, but for the poor it may be kacha it may be the kacha type or they lack some basic facilities in the houses so the housing pattern can also indicate about the wealth of the different groups or sections of the people then the people who are, who are working in the government services the family members who are working in the government services can be an indicator suppose of, of for a family if the two persons from a rich family there are two persons in the government service then their status will be little better than the others a poor landless farmer can also have a service government service their status can also be little bit improved and similarly here the some of the medium farmer who don't have any person in the government service so in this way with the different parameters we try to rank the level of different sections of the people so this is known as wealth ranking now we come to the next exercise this is matrix ranking matrix ranking can be done for the different purposes for example we want to find out the suitability of tree species for social forestry here we can find out the different utility of the different type of the trees
it may be the fuel wood purposes then we can have Suppose we are collecting information from the 10 villages about the different trees, tree species which are useful in the villages. The suppose T1, tree number 3, this species is useful from fuel wood point of view. If 10 persons have given their scores for, suppose they, this, they think that this is a suitable tree or the suitable species for fuel load, then they can here give their preferences for giving their maximum marks. Suppose there are the very good, good and satisfactory, then they can term is a very good species. So, if all the persons is ranking very good, it means this is the most suitable tree for the fuel load. Similarly, Suppose the species number 2 may be good for fodder, it may not be good for the fuel load, it may not be good for furniture and similarly we can judge the different types of its utility. Some of the trees may be very useful or very it's respected from the religious point of view, for example, people in our villages or even the name, we do not use these trees for the other purposes, but we can have these trees for religious purposes. So, similarly, from any forestry point of view, we have a ranking by the people and later on, we can judge that which are the suitable species of the trees. This exercise can also be done to find out the different variety of crops as I suggested, as I told you in the some of the earlier exercises. This exercise can also be done for example, the paddy, suppose there are 5 variety of paddies to be grown in a particular area. As per the utility by the farmers, we can have a matrix ranking as per the utility, some may be good in test, some may have a better commercial value. Some may be easily digestible. The farmers can rank the different variety. It may be very good in taste. It may be very commercial from point of view, just like the basmati rice. It is tasty as well as it is very useful from the commercial point of view. They can fetch a better price. So, likewise, they can rank the different varieties of the crops and we can develop a matrix ranking for different varieties and to try to fix the priorities of the people. So, the basic purpose of the PRA exercises are to fix the priorities as per the people's viewpoint. With this, we come to the end of this part of the program. In the next part of the program, we will focus on some of the PRA exercises. Thank you. <laughs>